Hello and uh, welcome to this talk about Debian and Yocto project, a tale of two distros, one of which is not a distro. I shall explain. So I'm Chris Simmons and uh, let's have a, let's get on. So this is the uh, obligatory um, uh, license screen. I'll leave you to read this at your own leisure. This is a little bit about myself. So I'm a consultant and trainer. I've been doing stuff with Linux as an embedded operating system for over 20 years now. I've written a book on the subject. And you can find me speaking at many conferences, including this virtual embedded Linux conference. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, you can also uh, follow me on Twitter and you can link to me on LinkedIn. Okay, so that's me. Meanwhile, let's get on with it with the show. So this talk then is about Debian or Yocto project, which one should you be using for your future embedded systems? And it comes down to a discussion about whether we should be using uh, off the peg or bespoke. So off the peg, by this I mean using something like a Debian based distro. Uh, you can just grab a copy, grab an image, put it onto your board, should pretty much work uh, out of the box. And then you can install the packages you need and you should be up and running in almost no time. Or contrast that with the bespoke approach where we build everything from scratch using uh, something like Yocto project, which means that we can tailor the system for exactly what we want and we are in total control. So those are the, the ends of the spectrum. So let's have a look and see which way you want, might want to go. So Debian, I'm using Debian here as a bit of a placeholder for any other uh, distribution that you may be using. Uh, so pretty much everything I'm talking about applies also to say SUSE, Fedora and your own favorite distro. Uh, but Debian is commonly used for embedded systems. Um, and the main advantage of Debian is it's a binary, dis binary distro. So you don't have to cross compile anything. You just pick up the binaries, away you go. Um, also, Debian is, is familiar to a lot of people uh, in the guise of Ubuntu. Uh, Ubuntu is based on upstream Debian. On the other hand, we have Yocto Project. So Yocto Project is a build system that creates packages from source code using a tool called Bitbake, which is the job scheduler, and metadata uh, from both the Yocto Project and another project called Open Embedded. Yocto project and open embedded and bitbake are three uh, three of a pair three that go together um, so I sometimes refer to Yocto project when I should be referring to open embedded and sometimes I do the opposite uh, so Yocto and open embedded have been around for a long time there are literally millions and millions of devices running software created using these tools so the thing about Yocto is that you are using it to create your own tailor-made distro. You decide exactly the rules uh, for selecting the packages and building those packages that go into your system. And um, you should end up with the ideal system for your particular hardware. So binary distro, easy to use and set up, but you are restricted to do the things uh, that were decided for you by the, the builders of the Debian distro, or build your own distro using Yocto, you give you gives you total control, but you're gonna to have to pay, pay some more uh, time and effort, or spend some more time and effort uh, putting this together. So the next topic I want to look at then is the board support for both of these uh, systems. This is kind of crucial uh, there's no point trying to use either one if it's not going to run on your hardware. So Debian supports a range of uh, CPU architectures. Follow that link there for a complete list. I've selected the ones that I think are most useful for embedded systems. So we're looking at uh, x86, 32 and 64-bit and various versions of ARM, including the 64-bit ARM uh, distro.
So the selecting the architecture for your board is, is kind of part of the job, but it's not the end of it, because as well as support for a particular architecture, you need support for a particular board. So we refer to this uh, as the board support package or BSP. So just to be clear, a board support package is uh, the means of booting the board, which on ARM would be the bootloader, typically based on U-boot. Uh, on x86, it's the BIOS that comes flashed onto the board when you get the board. You need a kernel, obviously. Uh, you need the device drivers for that kernel that are specific to the board. So when I say kernel, you, that comes with a whole bunch of device drivers already built in, uh, but there may be some additional driver, device drivers you need for uh, particular peripherals. If you're using an ARM-based board, you will need a thing called a device tree. So the device tree is a description of the hardware, and that is obviously highly board specific. You will need to get that from the board vendor. And then finally, there may be some libraries specific to various components on the board. And in particular, I'm thinking here about the graphics. Uh, particularly ARM-based uh, devices, they all have, or no have, most of them have a GPU built in. Uh, and those GPUs are very specific to the uh, silicon vendor. So uh, Qualcomm use one, Rockchip use another one, NXP, the IMX chips use another one. So you're gonna need support for that particular um, GPU if you're using accelerated graphics. So in practice, what have you got? Well, if you are building a system based on x86, things are relatively straightforward. So these are generally called embedded PC boards. There are many, many, uh, probably hundreds of manufacturers of these boards, and they should pretty much work out of the box because it is kind of a small PC. Uh, the BSP itself then is really just the BIOS, which is flashed on the board when you buy it. The rest should be off the shelf uh, upstream uh, from Debian. ARM systems are more highly integrated and things are therefore more complicated. So you will probably need to get the full BSP from the vendor. And so for the, for the full BSP, I mean the kernel, the, the bootloader, the device tree, the drivers, the libraries. And remember when you're doing this, the vendor is maintaining this stuff, not upstream Debian. Um, things are a little bit easier if you have a 64-bit ARM device. 64-bit ARM, the variation between the kernels is somewhat less. And so you can, in most cases, use an, a stock off the shelf Debian kernel. Whereas with 32-bit uh, ARM devices, the, the kernels tend to be very specific to each device. Quick mention for Raspberry Pi, since it was mentioned in the blurb for this talk. So Raspberry Pis are very popular, uh, not only for general purpose computing, general purpose computing, uh, but also in embedded. And we can argue, argue whether that's a good thing or not, but it does get used for a lot of embedded devices, particularly the compute modules, which are specifically designed for embedded use. So in this case, the Raspberry Pi organization uh, creates and maintains uh, the BSPs for you. Um, historically, uh, it has uh, maintained a, a distribution called Raspbian, which is a port of uh, upstream, Raspbian, uh, upstream Debian for the ARM v6 architecture, which is the architecture used on the original uh, Raspberry Pis and also the current Raspberry Pi zeros. More recently, uh, they have uh, switched the name to Raspberry Pi OS, and there is a 64-bit version of this still in beta testing. So this is for both the Raspberry Pi 3 and Raspberry Pi 4. And it's based, uh, it's a pretty simple uh, port based on the upstream uh, Debian ARM64 port. So that's all nice. What about the Beagles? So I'm talking about BeagleBoard, BeagleBone and such like. Well, these are also very popular, especially in the embedded space. Um, the BeagleBoard um, org uh, look after all this stuff and they maintain a bunch of BSPs for their boards. So Raspberry Pis and Beagles 
pretty much no uh, no brainer just off you go okay flipping it around now to yonkto uh, how does it look here well it also looks pretty good in fact yonkto has better board support than uh, debian in this respect because pretty much anybody who makes an embedded board particularly if it's based on arm they will have um, a board support package uh, for that board. Uh, within uh, Yocto, the board support package is normally provided as what we call a meta layer, and I've got a slide on that a bit later on, uh, but most of these board uh, vendors do indeed have such a meta layer. So Yocto is obviously the winner here. If you have um, boards which are not supported uh, upstream, you can create a board support package using uh, Yocto project. And in my experience, at least, that's much easier to do than it is for Debian. On the other hand, Debian is really great if it happens to support one of the boards that you are choosing. And there are quite a, quite a few of those. Okay, the next thing I want to look at is the root file system. So the root file system, this is the main part of your operating system. It's the programs, libraries, scripts, configuration files, all the other bits and pieces that make your system run. And in both cases, both with, uh, uh, with Yocto and with Debian, the components you put together are put into, uh, are, are packaged as packages. So a package uh, can be just a single program, or it can be a library, or it can be a bunch of configuration scripts, or something larger. So a package could be, uh, for example, GCC, if you want to install a compiler, that's a big, big package which has lots of things in it. Um, or it could be something like Open, um, uh, open SSH, if you want to install the uh, SSH package, which is a bunch of libraries and the SSH tools. So, you need to get, uh, sorry, your, your embedded system is basically composed of a bunch of these packages. So there are two ways of doing this really. You can either start small and get bigger, uh, start with nothing and then just list one by one the packages that you need. And there are tools that do this for you and work out the dependencies. You don't literally have to sit down with a piece of paper. Um, or you start with, uh, you start big and, and, and slim down. So you start with a known working system, uh, typically a desktop distro, and then you strip out the stuff that you don't need. So looking at this from the Debian point of view, essentially you have your root file system. You can do things like apt install and install package, in this case, XYZ. That goes and fetches it from the configured Debian repository and installs it into your root file system. Seems easy. Um, and this is what I call the search for the golden master. So this is kind of the start big and, and slim down uh, approach of things. So you typically begin with your full desktop image. Uh, for example, for your BeagleBone, you've uh, installed the BeagleBone image, the, De the Debian image for BeagleBone. And now you want to tailor that to do whatever it is you want it to do. So you take the full image, you start stripping out stuff you don't want. Uh, you add in the stuff that you do want, so particular packages for various libraries and tools that you want for your particular project. Um, make a few tweaks, uh, typically to the boot scripts, so that when it boots up, it boots into your application. Uh, maybe lock a few things down. And once you're happy with all that, uh, you take a copy of the, uh, of the memory using the dd command or something similar, and you create what I call the golden master because you're now going to take that image and just replicate it to everything that you ship. Okay, um, so I'm, I'm mentioning this because I have seen this done so many, many times and it always goes wrong. Why is that? So the Golden Master is not a great idea. The first thing is, as I described it, the way you create it is kind of interactively. You make a few changes, you try something out, you make a few more changes, try something out again, and you keep on doing this until it works. But almost certainly you didn't write down every single thing that you did. 
So that makes uh, maintaining the Golden Master quite tricky. Uh, since you don't know how you created it, you can't create a new one. You can only take what you've got and keep on making more, uh, more changes to it. Not only that, it probably leaves some kind of fingerprint behind. So you may have left some accounts or passwords lying around somewhere. Your bash history might be stored in the .bash history file. There may be some log files that you forgot to clean out. The whole thing is very handcrafted. So setting paths, this is the right way of doing it. What we need is robust, reproducible builds. And there are some tools that will do this for you. Uh, I would highly recommend looking at either LB or Ambien. Uh, go look at those links there. And those both allow you to uh, give a, essentially a list of Debian packages and uh, some configuration information, and it will generate your root file system reliably and reproducibly from those scripts. Looking at things instead from the Yocto project point of view, um, this is illustrating the, uh, the way that we're building stuff using upstream source code. So we have a bunch of metadata, which are called BitBake recipes. Uh, we have a list of packages in what we call an image uh, recipe. So that's a, a kind of meta meta recipe. And then BitBake will build all of those packages for us. For each one, it will download the source code from the upstream um, location, wherever that may be. It builds it into a local package by default um, using the RPM format, but you can change that. And then eventually it will put all those packages together for you into the root file system. Uh, so this is very, very uh, deterministic um, and yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's the way we do things. So one of the um, uh, great things about uh, Yocto project is these, this trinity uh, of the distro, the machine and the image. So the image, uh, well, this is in the right order, the distro. <laughs> so the distro is the set of instructions you give to uh, BitBake. These are basic policies to which versions of packages, packages do I want to use? Do I want to use the latest or the, some uh, more conservative version? Uh, which builds, uh, sorry, which um, uh, init system do I want to use? Which logging system do I want to use? That kind of high level policy stuff. Then I can select the machine, which essentially is selecting the board support package I want to use, in other which, hard, which hardware am I going to run this on? And then I can select the image. Um, which is a kind of super recipe, which lists the packages I want to build. And the nice thing is you can change these things around uh, independently. So I can keep the distro and the image the same and just change the machine. And then I can build exactly the same distro for different hardware. Um, or I can change the distro and I can keep the uh, machine and the image the same and I'll get the same, uh, a similar image, but using a different packaging. Um, a different set of packages. So it gives you almost total flexibility as to what you want to create. So comparison of that stage then, um, Yocto, since we're building from source, means we have very fine control over what goes into the packages. Uh, the typical bit bake recipes allow you to select individual or, or very, very uh, finely grained uh, configuration options. Um, and so you can create packages that are as big or as small as you want them to be. Uh, not in, only that, when you are compiling the source code, uh, you'll be using the compile flags from the appropriate um, machine configuration, which should be tuned exactly to the CPU you're using. Uh, on, the other hand, on the other hand, with Debian, uh, you're using binary packages, so they will be compiled using whatever um, options are given for the uh, upstream Debian port you're using. And these will tend to be more generic. They will, use, they will work on a range of um, Intel or uh, ARM processors, but they may not be ideally tuned to any particular one. 
Um, also, the way the packages in Debian are put together, they tend to be bigger. And so you will end up using more storage, sometimes quite a lot more storage, maybe three or four times as much. Um, and quite often they will end up uh, selecting options that you don't necessarily want. And quite often this ends up using more, more RAM as well. So a Debian system is gonna be bigger and require more memory. Uh, and of course, do not, whatever you do, create a golden master. Okay, the next thing I want to look at is developing code. So by this, I mean, uh, how are we going to compile the code we've got for the specific thing we're using the board for uh, and how we're going to put it onto that board. So uh, at the top level, uh, it's really a comparison between cross compiling and native compiling. So normally we do, we use cross compiling. Uh, so this is the, the traditional embedded way of doing things. So this is quite nice. It means that you're compiling on a, usually a fast machine, usually your desktop or maybe a server, uh, which is probably um, an Intel based device. And then you are deploying on the target, uh, which most likely is running an ARM SOC of some kind. So you get the best of both, both worlds. You get a nice fast compile environment, and then you can deploy the, the final binaries uh, on the target. The other way of doing things is to do native compiles. So you compile on the same machine you're going to uh, run the code, which in this case would be the target. Um, so Yocto is very much based on the concept of cross-compiling. And this is facilitated by the way that it, you can create an SDK, System Developers Kit. So that's an option within, within Yocto, uh, an open embedded, and that generates an SDK, which you can then install onto uh, another machine. And that contains the cross-compilers, it contains uh, development packages for the libraries, uh, it contains some debug tools and some profiling tools and some other useful stuff. So this is an easy way to deploy and develop code uh, for your target system. Debian by contrast is really built around native compilers. So that means that uh, in the simplest case, you would have to compile on the target uh, using the libraries and such like uh, installed on the target. But obviously, if you're building small IoT systems, you don't have a very fast CPU, you don't have very much memory, and you probably don't have very much storage. So in practice, unless it's something uh, as simple as a Hello World program, this doesn't work so well. Quite often, you'll find people recommend you to use QEMU to get around this. So QEMU is an emulator. It allows you to emulate a whole bunch of uh, target architectures, including the various ARM machines. So you would set up a QEMU environment and uh, I think Debian supports this pretty much out of the box. Um, for the architecture you're using, say ARM64, and then you would provision that with a lot of memory. And of course it has access to all the storage uh, on your device. And so you can do much bigger builds within QEMU. And then that generates the executables and then you can put those onto the target board. Um, so this works perfectly well. Um, it's a little bit of a faff, but a few scripts can, can help you get there. So um, <laughs> in, my opinion, in my opinion, uh, cross compiling is where you should be. And Yocto uh, does that because that's essentially the whole way it works. So I am much happier with Yocto for this than using uh, Debian. Um, next topic I want to talk about. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about long-term maintenance for these things. So this is a big issue. Um, the devices you build and deploy today are likely to be in use uh, for two, four, ten, uh, maybe even longer years. 
And particularly as things become more and more connected, then support and fixing the, uh, the security issues with those boards becomes uh, important. So both Debian and Yocto have support policies. Neither of them are 100% what you want. Uh, but in the case of Debian, uh, so Debian releases are supported for typically five years. And if you go look at the, uh, that, that link there to the Debian LTS project, uh, there's information on how they, how they do that. Um, note that when I talk about Debian support, I'm talking about the, uh, essentially the root file system and maybe the kernel if you're using a, an upstream kernel. But the remainder of the board, so board support package uh, comes from the board, board vendor. And so it is their responsibility uh, to, uh, to, to maintain that. And so you probably need to talk to your, BS, uh, to, to your uh, board vendor to find out what their support policies are. Uh, the Yocto project um, has in the last year introduced a long-term support um, release. So there's one LTS release per year and the LTS releases are supported for two years. Um, so that's not quite as long as, uh, as, as Debian. Um, and when you get to the end of that two years, you have a few choices you can make. Uh, you can either go on and self-support. Um, you can uh, see if you can seek uh, support from a commercial uh, vendor or, or, from an, or even from the community. Um, or you can update to the next uh, release of the Octo project and rebase everything on a new release of Yocto. Uh, the latter one is in many ways the ideal solution, um, but it's also the most complicated one because it means you've got to do a complete rebuild and re maybe even a complete validation exercise, uh, which may be problematic. And I'll emphasize again, the LTS uh, Yocto uh, support is only for the core of the Yocto project. It does not in particular contain the meta layers, uh, which are supported by, in this case, uh, the, the board vendors. So that is a quick run through of all of the uh, topics I want to cover, uh, looking at various aspects of Debian and Yocto. So can we, build, can we draw any conclusions from this? So I want to say, first of all, it's not either or. Uh, on several occasions in the past, I've tried to draw this as a, as a conflict. Obviously, it's not a conflict. Um, both Debian and Yocto are good choices in various cases. So I really think Debian is the best solution if you're using commodity hardware, which has good upstream kernel support. So I'm talking about uh, x86-based systems, and I'm talking about um, uh, things based on the ARM64 uh, Debian port, which is well supported. Um, of course, you need to build your root file system using uh, a, a suitable tool, uh, such as Elbe or, uh, or, or ARM, uh, Armbian. Um, but if you do those things, yeah, it should work. It should work. Um, and it's especially good, of course, if you want to do proof of concepts and prototypes, because you can probably get a Debian system up and running more quickly than you can equivalent Yocto. However, uh, Yocto is, uh, is, is, uh, has its own niches. It's uh, great if you have, well, it's essential if you have custom hardware, which uh, has no upstream support uh, from Debian or other distros. Uh, and that's probably the majority of cases where it gets used. And also it's really great in that it's optimized. So the memory usage and the, and the storage usage will be less in a Yocto based system than they will in an equivalent Debian system. So you choose which is the best for you. Okay, so that is everything I have to say right now. So over to you, and if you have any questions, please go ahead and ask them right now. 
Thank you very much.